sad times in my head. That's feelings come up and just let go. Change my life. Change the way I think. Change my life. Um, being very emotional. Is that the Macca's hat? It is. What are you boys just talking about Macca's? Oh, we're yeah. talking about Hungry Jacks. The burgers, burgers are better, burgers better at Hungry, Hungry Jacks. Burgers are better. Yes, they bloody well are. They're really good. Mm. I haven't and had Hungry Jacks in fucking years though. I've only had three times. Yeah, three every times, every yeah. time it slaps? Every, yeah, it's been really good. Mm. Fuck yeah. Um, and now, what else is... I haven't actually had like the proper takeaway in for ages. Though. It's been good. No KFC, which has been... That's a big win. Yeah, for me. what's your um, what's your killer? Like, what's your go-to takeaway? KFC. Actually, oh, it's very hard because for Macca's, I have this meal that I get. It's mm. a triple cheeseburger. Oh, okay. Talk but you that. take the ketchup, mustard, onion, and pickles off. Okay. And you add lettuce and mayo. Oh. It is so what, a it's fucking like a, game changer. It's, just <laughs> it's like a. Tri- it's like a. It's a deluxe cheeseburger. Deluxe cheeseburger. Yeah. I've been having it since I was like sixteen years old. I fucking froth we, it so um, much. Should we put the order in now so we get a rise by the time we finish? Oh, Hayden, Hayden's <laughs> cooking me dinner and oh. I know it's going to be good. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a lonely dinner. Oh, no. Got enchiladas. You got enchiladas, baby. Fuck yeah. Very nice. All right. All right, well. Welcome back to the podcast. That's, it's, defi- um, that's definitely saying it. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome back. It's uh, been a couple of weeks since we've uh, done a potty. We had last week off yeah. um, and now we're back ready to go. Excited times ahead for us all, isn't it? It's it. Also, we've had the uh, big Maxi hitting the world. Uh, was, was it Australian Hang record? Hang <laughs> Australian record. Fuck what, yeah, boy. Three, 385? Yeah, what was the numbers? Uh, Tell us, baby. Uh, yeah, right. Well, for all you uh, people who are actually watching it on YouTube. Yep. Here she is. Gold medal. Yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah, over the weekend was the 2023 GPC Global Palace and Community Nationals for Australia. Um, yeah. Went out there with a bit of a goal to win it for three times in a row. I think I was on the last potty and to hit the uh, the Australian record um, at the current one. It was three eighty, so I went out there for my second lift and got three eighty five. Um, coach came up to me after and said, "Do you want to go for 400? And I, that would have been the um, yeah first person in Australia to ever attempt it, and probably would have gotten it. But I think three eighty five felt heavy. Mm. <laughs> It didn't look it. The video looked pretty good, uh, but yeah, it felt heavy, and I was like, "Yeah, no, nah, I'm good." Same as play the long game. I was like, "I may as well finish the day because if I don't finish the day, then you don't get the record." So yeah. I, um, yeah, did all that. Uh, did a two seventeen and a half bench, and then a three twenty two and a half kilo deadlift. I got Jesus to my Christ. got to my last deadlift warm up, and I was like, "Oh, my body was pretty cooked at this stage." I tore the quad on the first squat, so I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be great." <laughs> Um, and then I it all started to seize up a little bit towards the end of it. Then I pulled my last warm up deadlift and like had all this indigestion come up, like I was gonna throw up like, mm. on my last dead. And I was like, Ooh, that was tough. And I turned around, my coach watched me do that, and he just goes, Yeah, we're gonna have to drop your opener because my opener was gonna be 3 30. I was like, Oh, nah, like I, I'm not feeling it. Like my body's pretty cooked at this stage. Uh, so we went down, quickly changed it to 3 10 just so I can just get on the board. Yep. Um, it's a bit different Like it's different For the warm up area To the platform Obviously because you're In front of a lot Of different people mm. uh, Things like that But yeah if like, It was a wonky deadlift I got it And then um, I was like Calm down a bit I was like Well now I've got All my lifts I'm going to finish the day I've, I've won You know But well, I, did, I did some quick math In the head And I was like Hmm What do I need To get the biggest total Out of the whole competition So one of the big fellas um, Denny Uni, he's a big boy. He finished on nine twenty, and I was like, "Oh, okay, so I got to beat that." So for me to win, I like to pull it all out. Of, oh, no, three twenty two and a half. That's you know only a twelve kilo jump, twelve and a half kilo jump. So like, that's not too bad. Came out there and fucking boom. I was like, "Oh man, I could have gone heavier," but I was like, "Nah, done." Finished the day, biggest total of the comp, got the record, and then yeah, just uh, shook hands, everyone, shook hands, all the judges, and walked off and had a beer. It was great. What um. What, so what was your final numbers like all up? Like is in like like do you do you count them all together yeah. or what was your like what was it all up? So all, all up at, all up at the end was nine hundred twenty five oh, kilos. Jesus Christ! But what who was the, what was second? Uh well, second in my weight class, I mm. think was somewhere around eight forty or eight fifty. So like not even touching. Not really. No. Like it's not that's a bad thing, man. I just um you know like what we've been talking about in, in mm. King's Legacy, it's like. It's not a, um, it's not saying that it's not this air of arrogance or anything or, this, or ego centric or any of that bullshit. It's just that, you know, 
you get to that level yeah. and the level I'm at, it's like, you know, I'm on my up there, mm. you know, it's not, I'm just going to go in there and do my thing. And yeah, it's just quite fortunate that I'm that strong that it's put me ahead a fair bit. And yeah, you know, it's, um, I should see, <laughs> I think it's good in a way that kind of pushes everyone else in the weight class to go, well, shit, if I want to be the best, yeah, like you got to, you, you know, you can do that. But for me, then I'm going to be watching you and I'm going to be like, okay, if you're going to try and catch up, I'm going to keep working my ass off mm. to keep, you know, keep that, uh, sorry, pushing that gap between us in a way. Like I'm, I'm yeah. going to be better for me. Yep. And as a result, it's going to be harder for someone else to catch up. But I don't really see it as, you know, in a way, like it's not the weight class that's a big thing. Obviously, that's where you compete on the day. But in my gym, I, I strive to kind of be the best in what I do in a lot of ways. Um, and there are a few facets of life. I just like to... um. I'll look at the other guys in the gym, I'm like, oh, I want to be the strongest in, the, in my gym. Mm. And there are some lighter fellas, like, shout out to my boy Jaden Bartlett, who also, he opened up with the national record and went for the all-time world record squat. Just missed it by a Nats nut, hey, at 330. He was weighing 74.1 kilos. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, what, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> That's over four times his body weight. That's uh -huh. like, what, four and a half million times his body weight? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Fuck. He, <laughs> he got a 10 and a half, <laughs> it was a 10 and a half, time body weight total he finished on like 760 or something right like bikes a freak we're calling the filipino thunder for a reason this guy is amazing wow um, so yeah i'll look at him and i go fuck this guy's stronger than me mm. body to rate ratio is stronger than me i gotta be stronger than him like i just i gotta work harder you know, stuff yeah like that. it's good good sort of you know he's got that motivation inspiration sort of thing it's you know i want to work hard and he's got a monster bench too he's got a, like 190 kilo bench at 74 Jesus. kilos it's wild. It's, I don't even yeah. want to talk about my day in the gym. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I put my back out getting out of bed. <laughs> Bro, I was like humbled by a chick on the fucking thrusters. <laughs> on the thruster machine. I like, put me weight on there. I was just like, this ain't too bad. Put a couple of weights on there. I didn't know what it, what it was. But then I just looked at her and she just kept stacking. And I was like, fuck. And then I was just watching her and she was like doing it nice and slow. And I was like, she's fucking just showing off right now. Mm. And then there was a girl there that I knew and she came up to me and she goes, it's okay. The machine that you're on is a lot harder. And I was like, oh, thanks. But she goes, you also need to be doing a lot more than that. And I was just <laughs> like, I was like, no, this is the first time I've like, second time I've ever done it. So oh. leave me alone. Go fucking bench press your five kilos. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> no. Wow. Um, but yeah, how's, I've obviously Maxie's on a fucking, on a high. He's feeling good. Yeah, feeling good, but I'm bloody sore. Yeah, I've, um, like I say, that quad start to seize up, and so is my lat, um, which I'm not sure if I talked about it when I was on the potty myself. I'm also not just being, you know, number one powerlifter, making me pretty rare in Australia, but um, I'm also one of the rarest specimens in the world. Like, I have haemophilia, which is a bleeding disorder where your blood doesn't clot, for those who don't know. And it's resulted in a fair few complicating injuries over my time, uh, you know, even playing rugby and things like that. Ended my rugby career, funnily enough. Even the doctor's like, mate, why are you playing? If you get a head knock, you will die. And I was like, yeah, probably. I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know until I was 23 after that big thigh one. But anyway, yeah, as a result, I've had to, I'm going to be in hospital for the next couple of days, just um, getting my blood medication, making sure I'm okay, just to stop all the bleeding internally um, so things just don't get worse. So Jeez, it's going to be, oh, it's fine, man. Look, it's just a reality of what it is. It's like just something to overcome. It's all good. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, like the next challenge, I think, for me today would be to get out of this chair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, trying to get out. Yeah, it's going to take a bit of an effort, but yeah, no, nah, that guy's I'm pretty good. Feeling good about that. Um, I think in recent times we're trying to live presently. You know, I've been trying to focus on living in the present, celebrating the wins. That's been a big challenge for myself. Rather than go right, that's done. What's next? Mm. Um, you know, so yeah, I'm going to kind of enjoy this a little bit more than I normally would. In nice. a way, like you know, actually, just actually like relishing it and not be like, okay, well, I don't know what's next, but it's just like, well, no, let's enjoy this, let's enjoy it a bit and be present with you know, and receive all the nice and my the nice messages and the cuddles and things like that. And I'm very appreciative, especially of you guys. I'm yeah. very appreciative of it. So, um, no, we're definitely, like uh, said, definitely proud of you, man. You're good. Man. Uh, like, I, like I said, my post too on, on Insta was like, you know, my Insta is Max Power, I was like, but Max Power isn't just me, it's like everyone around me. That's helped me out, like rehab coach, nutritionist, you guys, everyone that kind of can listen to my bullshit. <laughs> you know, all through these grueling preps, you you go to dark places, and you know, if it wasn't for you guys, I don't know how how much of the light I get to see because it puts you in some fucking pretty pretty awful spot sometimes. But yeah, like and that's yeah. what I say. That's why Max Power is numero uno because it's everyone who holds me out. You know, it's not just me. It's it's you know becoming a bit of a bit of a so an entity. <laughs> no, that's good. You know, so yeah, we'll keep really trying to conquer and um, 
you know, try and transition all this sort of success into other facets of my of my life, especially, you know, um, as I start taking over a little bit more in, in the Polaris world, try mm-hmm. and bring that energy and this um, sort of uh, drive yeah. and, and things into it. So, That's yeah. good. How are you guys going? You there? Oh, I'm doing good. I, um, yeah, been in, in, in the office the last two days, which has been nice. Nice little change, get out of fucking concrete. Um, but yeah, and other than that, I'm doing pretty good. Had a, um, a pretty... Pretty relaxed weekend. It was nice. Had a couple of beers. I did by myself. It was a couple of. I didn't feel too good the next day. I that much. I only had like <laughs> five, I think. And um, isn't it funny now? You have a couple and it fucking sends you. The yeah, next I day. just yeah. felt. I was like, this is why I don't drink. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. It was a good day. Went went and watched the uh, watched the Knights play. The fucking the Knights, the fucking Knights <laughs> baby. <laughs> Fuck, Ponga better not be out for that long, bro. No, he's only out this week. Yeah. Sure, be, yeah. I don't know. He'll be don't no. Don't know. It's only it's a minor injury. He'll be back. Just yeah. inject it. Maybe. Yeah, that's it. They are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, <laughs> life's good. We're um, pumping a few more stuff in Polaris. Which and is what good. happened for you today? Got a client for uh, the shift, baby. Hey. Let's fucking go, Paul. Yeah, buddy. Fuck yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. No, it was, um, I kind of knew it was going to happen. I was just waiting for her to, mm. to push it. Just be like, yeah, okay, I'm in. Yeah. And I reckon we've got a couple more coming. Yep. Um, Very nice. Yeah, it's just a bit of time, but. Nice. Ready to go. Fuck yeah. How are you? I'm fucking tired. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm drained. Uh, but no, nah, doing good. Doing really good. Um, I think Max can testify for this. There's, it's just a different energy in regards to my coaching and stuff. So, um, last night we had Kings. Kings was yeah. Um, <laughs> without getting too descriptive for the listeners, but fuck it. Um, every time I think about coach now, it's just like it's just like a, a tingle downstairs, and it's just like I want to fucking just get after it every time I'm on there. So, um, you feel that, Alan? You feel a tingle in your balls? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You feel the metal butterflies in your stomach? I don't. Are you sure you don't have testicular cancer? <laughs> what are you saying that? No. The other guys, yeah. Mark oh, Wahlberg yeah, with a wooden gun, <laughs> like oh, yeah. he puts a song on. <laughs> oh sure. fuck! Um, but yeah, Great no. Movie. Uh, yeah, coaching's going well. So Kings, we're up to and nearly through month five now. Um, so just over halfway. And uh, our women's group is just cracking off into week three, three this week. Um, yeah. Had some massive breakthroughs over the past seven days with them. We've... Yep. 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 Oh, yeah, massively. Uh, I'll explain that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really good on that. Um, and that end, and uh, we actually hired a new coach in the last uh, since we've been back on. So Jess Benick is one of our new women's coaches as well. Ooh. Um, so welcome to the team, legend. Now we have five of us. Family grows again. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been nice to um, yeah, been nice to get out of that hamster wheel and you know not just focusing on every single day, just like like this it's more like focusing on you know expanding into different areas now focusing on getting you into your next intake with jess and then yeah getting max and acacia trained up as well and we're working with a new business coach now as well um shout out john uh so we've been sitting down with him um did a two-hour interview with him last week um which was really nice and we've just got clear on what the you know what the vision and the goal is and what we're here for and everything like that so yeah it's it's been really good. It's just uh, this period at the moment, it's just, yeah, it, it's just a lot for me at the moment. I'm just on the computer, you know, a lot. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining about it. It's just um, a lot of energy and a lot of, you know, a lot of headspace being put into it. But this is what we're here for. Get you guys all trained up so then we can start um, getting all of your intakes mm. happening. So We um, also, just a little teaser to everyone, um, I did have my mana program that was going, which was a online course, mm-hmm. but I am changing it to an in day person event. Mm-hmm. Um, so what it's going to, I give you a rough, rough little idea. Yep. It's going to, I'm going to be bringing in my culture, everything that I've learned from my culture and everything I've learned within Polaris and bring them together and help people see their inner warrior through a few different things that I've got in mind. I've um, been talking with one of my cousins and we've, um, yeah, we've got a pretty cool game plan ready to go. And yeah, yeah I'm fucking excited for yeah. it. Don't uh, don't say it yet, but no. yeah, what he what he was saying before, Maxie will tell you after. But um, let's just say his uh, his heritage is going to oh. fucking come through. Yeah, was that, yeah. Was that when I was asleep, snoring my head off. No, no, no. Oh, before that, today. <laughs> before yeah. that, um, no. That's that's really good. It's uh, it's nice Sweet. that you've transitioned into that because, as we were saying before, there's no point having something that's so similar to a signature program that you're going to be teaching anyway. Exactly, so yeah. um, it'll be nice for all of you to have your own pieces going that are completely different. 
that has your own blend and your own take on it where you get to take 100% of everything and you get to focus on it and create it and you know put all your creative flow into it but then while also coaching the the signature stuff as well so yeah yeah we're in a we're in a good space mate it's it's yeah 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 it's been it's been really fucking good yeah I'm excited yeah yeah I um I was saying to um I was saying to John um last week while we're doing that interview it's like um do you remember like this guy? So not just like you guys, um, but for people who listen as well. Do you know those um, those moments back in the past where, just like, y- you were starting something or you were like focusing on starting something, and you know that the vision was so big, but right then in those moments when you first started it, it was like you were going through so much and every single day it just felt like a slog and every single day you'd just be, you know, either going to bed and looking up at the ceiling and being like, like when's this going to turn around? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, mm. do you remember those moments? Yep. Very back, clear. You know, like, and John actually said this to me in, in this interview and it fucking actually hit me pretty hard. Um, we we're speaking about it and then we, um, he was just like, yeah, you remember those moments? Now you can look back on that version of yourself and say like that vision that you were thinking of like you've completed that vision. You can look back on that version of yourself and say like, yeah, I did it. Mm. But he's like, but that's ch- chapter one. Like that back then you thought that that was chapters one to 25. Yeah. Now it's just chapter one. Now we get to transition to chapter two. And I was just like, fuck yeah, that's actually, it's actually a really cool thing to, to think of that, you know, all this work that we've put into it's, it's starting to, it's starting to get to that next level. Like my first level was obviously just, you know, doing Polaris and getting Polaris up and running. And then the second one was getting you in. And then the third one was you and Acacia coming in. And now the fourth stage is like getting you guys all trained up. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's fucking awesome. It's, it's a, it's a a really, really nice and beautiful feeling. And it's all, um, it's all thanks to you guys that are investing into us and putting a trust into us as well. Yeah. It's, um, you know, everyone out there is, you know, you're all, you're all the reason why we're able to sit here and do this podcast and, you know, get this guy on full-time very soon and then have Max and Acacia and Jess r- up and running their programs as well. So, um, yeah, um, it's just a fucking blessing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, what do you got on there? Well, yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, it's really good you kind of say that because it's um, the topic of uh, this podcast actually comes into, it you know, comes in a lot behind that is our motivation and inspiration. And when does it cease to be a motivating, inspiring sort of concept and becomes habit? So I kind of wanted to ask you two guys, what is your definition on inspiration and motivation? Go first, bro. Um, I th- this is a hard question to answer, yeah. I feel. Um, <laughs> because I used to use inspiration from other people. Um, but then now I've started to learn I can use, like, like he was just saying before, is like, refle- like reflecting back on the stuff that you have done and then using that as inspiration, which also can be used as motivation. Mm. Um, like today I had a visualisation where I saw all that, then I also saw the future of what I'm working towards and it just it hit me real hard. Like I just, there was a moment there I just started, like had a few tears in my eyes and I was like, fuck, I've, I really have done that. So I guess like for now, like after today, I was like, that's, that's what I'm going to use as motivation mm. to keep going because I do catch myself in cycles of, like Jacob brought up the other day, like I'm here, here, like I'm doing so many different things. But then once it's bad, it's bad. And then once one thing's good, it's just like, then I'll go back to doing everything. It's just like, just to focus on that one and then use that as my motivation. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just think the, the definition of it is all that, I guess. Um, I don't think there's really anything that I could like fully nail it down to, to be. It's quite individual. It's quite individual. Yeah. 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 My, um, my inspiration definitely comes from the vision that I have 100%. I think if, um, like we've said this all, the whole time and it sort of relates back into it, but if you're focusing on motivation, motivation is such a fleeting emotion, you know, and that's why we get unstuck a lot of the time because we're focusing on fleeting emotions, emotions that can easily come and then easily go, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's not saying it's that. It's just, it's not really resourceful for you to stay consistent with what you're doing so you know um i truly believe if you don't have a lot of inspiration like your vision's just not fully there like you know you you, you, the things that we're doing we've got to have that vision of what we're achieving or what we're working towards like you know 
every every single day at the moment, you know, I'm waking up and I have that like out of bed and I want to sprint out of bed. It's not necessarily a fact of like, oh, fuck another day. I've got to go do this and I've got to do that. It's like, I'm out. I'm up. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go do this. Let's do this. I'm on. Um, not to say that the days that I'm having aren't challenging. Like there's still shit that I need to face. There's still shit that I need to do and everything like that. But the inspiration is stemming from that vision that I know that we're working towards. And I know that if we're going to complete that vision, that vision's going to be completed by doing this on the day-to-day processes. So yeah, motivation comes and goes like motivations there for two weeks and then it goes for four weeks. Like it, um, you know, just don't focus on motivation, motivation, just allow it to be there when it's there and it's great. We're fucking on, but you know, your consistency is the thing that's going to, you know, push you to that, push you to that next level. And once you start to re- achieve those results from being consistent, that's when you start to be more motivated. Well, I think um, like motivation too, it more comes down to like a, a habit. Like it turns into like a, a habit of like, so with like my running, it was like, I was trying to find the motivation to do it. Mm. But then now I've like, I'm starting to put in habits, like good habits to be able to keep doing that. So mm. it's not really focusing on the motivation. It's now becoming a habit, which is like a habit where, with the ice baths, with the journaling, with the meditating, like they were all things that I had yeah. to try and find motivation to do. Yeah. But now they've become habits. Like I don't even, they just happen. Like yeah. I don't have to like think about it. it just like this morning, I just woke, did work up, went to the gym, come home, did everything I had to do and then spent like a good hour and a half of just having time to myself meditating. Like, and I didn't even, it just happened. Like it just came out of nowhere and I was like, I should just do this. Yeah. And I think like, yeah, change, like not so much focusing, like you're saying on the motivation. It's just being consistent which will then have your, your good habits, which which will then inspire you to keep going because you'll mm. get to a point where you can look back and reflect on yourself and be like, ah, oh, I've done it. Yeah. I can keep going. I can do more. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's like it's fucking hard to start. Like it's not like it we're saying that it's not hard to start, you know, in regards to being consistent with it. But your consistency is what's going to get you to be motivated and inspired. Yeah. Like there's some days I'm sure where you're like, I can't be fuck running. But like if, if you know that you've got this vision – and this goal that you want to achieve that you're going to fucking run. Like, yeah. Um, so just be, yeah, just be aware of, you know, if, if you want that inspiration to be soaking, not just being like, oh, I feel inspired. I'm talking like that feeling that you have in your stomach and it's just like a fire that doesn't go out and you're consistently feeling that feeling all the time. And no matter what gets thrown at you, you're always, you know, going to be facing those things. We're, we've been speaking about in Kings, like, everything that we get thrown at us, it's not necessarily a fact of going, oh, I'm going to face this. It's more like, do you know when you, you perceive, like you, let's say a, a wolf is staring at something and have their head down and it's just like their direct eye contact, full alpha mode. And it's just like, I'm coming at you no matter what. Mm. It's like having that feeling at everything in your life. So not necessarily a fact of going, I have to be deep in my masculine 24 seven. It's more, okay, if I'm going to do something feminine today, I'm going to do it 100% of my capacity of doing that, you know? So um, that's where your inspiration comes from. It's not from being motivated. You know, there's some days where I'm, I cannot be fucked. Like there's some days where I cannot be fucked. But like I said, I know that vision that we have is so crystal clear that, you know, I, I, I'm going to be consistent with it and I'm going to show up. Well, that's why I, um, I rang you after that visualization I had and I was like, I think I had the vision because he always talks about this vision that he saw me and he kind of always would, he, he'd like slyly always say to like lean into my culture and I kind of thought I did with a few things but then I was like and then after today's meditation like my call I had last night my cousin it like hit me really hard and I kind of I saw like it was so weird in this visualization like I saw the chief and he has like his time walker which is a tattoo on your face had like all these tribe stuff on and I um saw him in the visualization the funny thing was he was looking at me i was looking at him but then behind him was jacob smiling and i just was like i, I just i was like oh, fuck that's the vision and i was like it just they just reassured that he's what finally, i'm he's finally starting to get it yeah what i said yeah, <laughs> then it reassured me that what i'm doing like this type of work and what i'm about to do is it's the right thing to be doing yeah like I, I literally nearly rang Tyson and was like, fuck, bros, I'm not coming in my way. Yeah. I'm done. I'm, I'm quitting. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. But then like that, that, I was like, but I'm not getting paid. So yeah. I'll <laughs> come back. <laughs> like, I, like I always said to you, there's, you know, what we, what we do here at Polaris, there is a set structure in regards to like how we coach and what we do in our coachings and everything like that. But all of you have different essences and what you're really strong at and what you're really powerful at. 
right? Like if someone was going to invest into Max, they're going to invest into Max because they want to become strong, right? Not just in regards to like being able to pick up weight because fuck, you can lift some weight. It's more strong emotionally, strong mentally, strong in every aspect of being spiritual. That's why they're going to invest into Max. People are going to invest into you because they see an empowered figure, but they also see someone that's full of heritage, someone that's full of, you know, their bloodline. So the more that you can start to bring that out for yourself, the more that you're going to start feeling like, fuck, I'm doing this. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was crazy too last night when I was speaking to my cousin. He um, we were just speaking about everything and he just stopped and he's like, fuck, bro, I've got goosebumps just watching you talk. Eh? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, it's fucking, he even said it. He's like, it's inspirational. It was like, it's, yeah. he goes, he's, because he's like half, half bred like I am as well. So it's like, it's cool to see mm. how passionate I am about it. And yep. he was just like, it inspired him to keep like doing like he wants to be a part of it as well. So I was like, yeah, it was just a, it was a very inspirational night and then into the day and then, yeah, just, I think today really kept me focused because yeah. I focused on that, that gave me that inspiration, that gave me that, like that anger, that well, not anger, sorry, that energy to, um, yeah, work through everything that I have set out today and like don't run away from anything, like lean into it as 100% as I can and that's my focus. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, that was good. So anyway, Max, what what do you yeah, think fuck. about? Uh, Speak up, bro. <laughs> yeah, your turn. <laughs> it's your turn. You, <laughs> <laughs> you, you only had fucking twenty six minutes on the first body. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, you, you guys are spot on. Like that's pretty much exactly how well, you, you succinctly pretty much um, talked about pretty much what inspiration motivation is. Uh, I know last night we talked about it, the Kings, and you asked me what is your definition of inspiration. It's pretty funny how we all have something has something that's happened in the last couple of weeks that's led us to figure out what our motivation and inspiration is to keep us going on our path. And I feel you're right, that consistency is key to building healthy habits. Um, but, you know, you do need a bit of that motivation, inspiration every now and again to actually kickstart you a little mm. bit more. Like, you know, mm. change it from second gear to third gear. There's that inspiration to get going, third to fourth, you know, just keep going, keep yeah. going. And like you say, um, <clears throat> like a perfect sort of analogy, I got hit up by um, a really dear friend of mine she just competed as well as na I mean, at, at nationals. And she won, took out her weight class and, you know, back-to-back -back national champion as well. Um, she asked me, she goes, I feel really sad. I feel sad. Like, I, I shouldn't. I just won. Like, you know, I feel, mm. what's going on? Mm. You know, why do I feel this way? I know she's known, I went through it a lot of times. And it's pretty much, you know, your post-comp blues. We put in so much, they say, that consistency. We put in so much energy, emotion, time dedication into what we're doing like those times you don't want to do it but you just get it done anyway yeah you know this is sort of like you know in a very specific example yeah, you put your all this time effort energy into one event so much emotion and hyped up around it now it's over mm, yeah you know and i know she kind of comes with a very similar thing of me having very so low self-worth you know that we're, we're working on um well at the time mine was low self-worth i was like you, you you found that was your identity and now that this is over you lose your purpose, mm. you know, and it's like, well, and I said, I said, well, no, no, I'm like, this is like, yeah, it's, there's a lot of emotion around it. Like it's huge and you feel like it's over, but it's not, you know, there is going to be another comp for one. You are going to keep working, but you've built this beautiful, healthy habit of bettering yourself, becoming strong. And she won on just her openers. <laughs> like, you know, didn't get the day she wanted. That's disappointing in itself. You don't get the day you want, but that's just powerlifting. Like, it's not always going to go your way. But she is that she's that strong in her class that she won all on her opening lifts. Like mm. she's fucking incredible. So I think for the advice I gave her was to say, you know what, live in the moment now. Like be present right now. Like how good do you feel that you've won? You know, actually just focus on that feeling. Mm. You know, that's what I'm doing now. You know, focusing on, and celebrating my win. You know, enjoy that. So now you've built this beautiful, like consistent habit. For your next comp, you'll be able to just keep doing the same thing over and over. Be better. You know, and like you say, reflect back, use that. There's like, hey, I'll just one or two times in a row. I'm going to follow Maxi. You're going to do it three times in a row. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. look back, reflect, be inspired to do it again. Do or look at other people. So just um, yeah. thinking what we've all been saying. So it's like l motivation kind of lacks in all of us. Like we will get to a point and like maybe like three weeks into doing something, our motivation will be a little bit, bit low, but we still get up, we still do it. Do you think if we were to set like, when you do f like feel like the motivation is starting to lacking, have something set in place so like you can reflect back on that to get that get regain that motivation. So let's just say this week, the start of this week, I feel so good, and at the end of the week, I'm gonna feel like shit. Maybe at the end of the week, have like a goal set to like refine that motivation to boost you back up again. Because I was just, like, I don't do that, but I'm just thinking, like it would be cool like to start implementing that 
to re- keep motivation because when I first started this run thing, I went good for like four days or something, and then I kind of just drifted off, and then now it's come back again, and now it's like at a, another high, like it's higher than what it was before. So then, like now to f- monitor my cycle, mm. it'd be to probably put something in place so I can regain that motivation back in myself instead of waiting for it to c- come again, which is kind of what I did. I was waiting for something to happen to yeah. just boost it, where, like where now. I'm a bit like I'm aware of it just from this conversation. It was like yeah, yeah. I could have something put in place to when I do feel it coming down, just to boom back up. Well, good thing that uh, we learnt last night at Kings was to make your weekly list. Yeah, like as you go through your week, you tick off what you're going to do, like your essentials. And you need know, all your essentials, and then you go, okay, well, I want to. I'd like to get this done. I'd like to get this done. So maybe that could be it. You just go, I'm going to make a list, and it's at a particular time each week, I'm going to do this each week. At this point, boom, and then maybe when you write down, I'm going to run say Monday, Wednesday, Friday or something, and then mm. you go, fuck yeah, there's my motivation again. Yep, I'm going to run this time, I'm going to run here, I'm going to do this. I think um, mm. the biggest thing I've learned from Jacob was, um, well, one of the biggest things, sorry, uh, was using Monday, uh, the task manager. Yeah. So like having, so I was really just using it for work and I would, every now and then, like, when I was using I was using, like adding little things in there that I do outside of work. But then I was just like, I was like, literally, as this is going on, I'm thinking, fuck, I could add in so much more of my daily actual task about everything. And instead of it just being about work, it could be about my whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you uh, if you do lack um, organization, definitely look into um, systemizing your organization. Definitely, because it's like, like, and three three biggest lessons I can give you in regards to organization is one: start your organizing of your week Sunday afternoon give yourself like yeah. half an hour to an hour on Sunday and set your whole week. Number two is put your high energy tasks on Monday and Tuesday, put your low energy tasks on Thursday and Friday. So what I mean by that is if you have tasks throughout the week that you need a lot of energy for, so for example, for me is creating content, podcasts, being up for stuff, recording Zoom calls, whatever it may be, um, being up for those, I put them on Mondays and Tuesdays. And then Thursdays and Fridays is like admin you know, um, editing content or stuff like that, where I can just be, have low energy, but still be focused in. So, um, that's the second option. And the third option is definitely organizing and, uh, sorry, investing into an organization software. So monday.com is brilliant. Um, there's, there's a plenty more, plenty more out there, um, as well. So, um, we have a free tutorial on monday.com as well. So if you do want it, let us know, we can send you the link for it. Slight little plug. Yeah. It's pretty good. Plug it in, baby. Plug it in. Yeah, so, <clears throat> well, on that, man, looking at it more personally, what are the, some of the more holistic approaches you have to that health, like to your physical, your mental and your spiritual health? Like, what are the things you put in place that, I'd say, you know, develops those three areas and enhances each and you know, keeps you sort of, say, motivated <laughs> yeah. to continue growing in those three spots? Um, I think I kind of touched on it just then really kind of, I, um, like everything I said there is something that I do every, like every day. Um, besides that motivation thing I just talked about is like implementing that. Um, but yeah, just, uh, I think what going back is I'm just really focused now, like focused on my, like know what my purpose is, which is this, and then to keep doing it every day. So like the, mo- like meditating and the journaling, like they're all just things now that are part of just like it's like waking up and eating or like it's just like it's a habit like mm. it's not a and i think that's how i just stay mo- like like motivated i guess with all that type of stuff and like even though like that does lower a little bit but i think knowing what i want to get out of life and like having now having goals set in place to be able to achieve i think that yeah well just that's going to keep me motivated to keep doing everything that i'm doing now to keep moving forward i guess yeah yeah um I think the one of the very first things for me was understanding spirituality as well. Um, so I know that word gets thrown around a lot and spirituality can be very subjective on what you believe. Like the same with religion and everything like that. But understanding what spirituality means for me, that's been a massive factor in regards to, you know, being able to, you know, be consistent in regards to all of this and, um, I wouldn't say I'm a massive believer in, um, uh, how do I put this? I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a massive believer in manifesting without taking action 
but I am a big believer in taking action while also manifesting at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like I'm all about the manifesting and everything like that, 100%. But I think there is something about taking action and being rewarded for it by something you can't define. Does that make sense? Like the, like the more that you take action on something, the more energy and the more backing you receive from like something higher yeah. that you just can't explain. Mm. You know, like... Um, so you're kind of saying like you're not going to... If you're trying to manifest something, it's something that you can't actually work towards, you know what I mean? Is that what you're trying to get to? Like if you're, most things that you are manifesting, it's something that you can do right now in the present to be able to bring it forward in the future. Is that yeah, yeah, 100%. That's exactly what I'm saying. But there's... Um, people would manifest without doing being in the physical realm. Yeah. So like they wouldn't be do, taking action on it. Oh, um, which, it's it's so more like, of them just speaking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Which, like sitting down and creating space and being like, I want to manifest a fucking Bentley or something like that. Yeah. And they're yeah. getting pissed off being like, where's my Bentley? You know what I mean? Like yeah. that type yeah. of stuff. I'm not a believer in that, but I'm a believer in if you're taking action, there's something. And once again, I can't define it. But that's the best thing about life, I believe. Those things that you can't define. Like you can't define love. Like you you give me a description of love. You did give me a description of love. And I give a description of love. It's going to be different. Yeah. You know, because we feel it in a different way. Yeah. But you can't, you know, uh, put your finger on it, if that makes sense. Like it's a feeling you can't describe. It comes in different ways in different forms, but you can't describe that. And I think those things that you can't define in life are the things that are very fucking beneficial to you if you're willing to put your ego to the side and put that hurt masculine to the side and actually start to believe in it that's when it's very powerful um so that would be the first thing is understanding what spirituality means to you i'm still working on it still a fucking work in progress don't get me wrong i'm very thankful i have lauren and all of her best friends around because They're very holy sh fuck me swinging they <laughs> they bring me into the spiritual realms don't yeah. get me wrong with that yeah. um but, you know, um, it's it's been really cool to learn about, you know, like my past lives and also where my soul has been and everything like that. And that's why there's a big emphasis. And like you guys know, there's a big emphasis on family, community, kingdom, everything like that. It's, it's a really big drive of what I believe in. So, um, yeah, understanding your spirituality is a, a really big thing. And then, you know, if you're going to come back to physical practices, training, nutrition, you know, hydration, everything like that, everyone knows that. But once again, it's like, are you, are you doing it or do you just know about it? They're yeah. the two differences. So yeah. um, I just didn't want to give an answer of like meditating and journaling. Like it's still something I do, but, you know, we speak about that and you just spoke about that. So I didn't want to give the, the same response. So I think taking the time to learn about your spirituality and, you know, I could talk about it, but what I believe in, spirituality isn't going to be the same thing or might be not the same thing that you, you know, will define it as. So, yeah, um, yeah I think there's just something really powerful about understanding that there's something higher than you that you can't understand and you can't put your finger on, but you just trust it. Yeah. Like that's, you know, I, I like obviously that's where religion comes from, but um oh, I shouldn't say it like that because people do believe. Anyway, yeah. um, th um, there's just, you know, there's something, yeah, really empowering about having a power above you that's, you know, putting you in the right direction. So, yeah. I think you, um, and you probably see a lot of that. Like, I just, well, I didn't really believe the spirituality stuff until I did visualizations and mm. stuff like that. Um, you, I heard about it a lot. Like, my auntie over in New Zealand, she's a very, like, she's very fucking spiritual. Like, mm. she sees shit and does a lot of spiritual stuff. Yeah. Um, and which I was just like, not wasn't calling bullshit on it at all, but I just wasn't understanding. And then it wasn't until I actually did the visualization where I saw that higher version and I saw like, and it just blew my mind. And I was like, fuck, there's so really is something else higher than us. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah. And then like going back to that, everything we do, like there is that high, that higher energy that we do feel yeah. in everything we do. 100%. Yeah. It's, and the more that you've leaned into it and the more you find out about it, the more it fucking just smacks you in your face all the time as well. It's really, yeah, it's really fucking cool. Um, so, yeah, um, 
I think definitely strengthening strengthening that, especially to all our men out there as well. Like definitely start to lean into your spirituality. Like don't be ashamed of it. Don't push it to the side and don't think it, you know, makes you a weakling or it's gay or it's pussy or anything like that. It's like, fucking not. <laughs> you know, those belief systems have served you for some time. Like it got you through school, right? Like it got you through school. You got a couple of roots from it. Like, you know, it served you for some time. But if you want to have a partner that truly looks up to you and children that look up to you, then probably swallow that fucking hurt ego and, you know, start to lean into your spirituality side. Fucking savage there. No, yeah. I fully freaking agree. Um, I definitely agree with that. Like, <clears throat> coming from a very sort of analytical background myself, being a fucking one of those dirty ginger beers, you just kind of look at things, facts, <laughs> figures, facts, figures, this is, this uh, is what I can see and yeah. what I can touch and what I can measure is yeah. what's out there. Then I started doing quantum physics and it blew my fucking mind. Yeah. That hurt. But I just couldn't, you know, quite understand it for one. But then seeing those sort of principles still applied in the spiritual world, learning it through here... Yeah, you know, I got a little bit more open to it. Like, I'll I'll, I'll be I'll be the bit of um, I'll be the controversial figure in this body and get ourselves banned real quick. No, but I, I agree. <laughs> the spirituality side, I hadn't really no. I'd say I haven't had an ignorant viewpoint on on spirituality. I thought you had to either be religious or you're not. You had to, you know, you did have to be defined on what you are. Like, are you a Christian? Are you Muslim? Are you Jewish? Mm. You know, or agnostic? Or atheist? For me, I thought I was proudly atheist. I know fucking it is what it is. There is no God, you know, nothing. And I was like, well, you know, but then because I believed, oh, the Big Bang, yeah, that's a very scientific thing. We can measure, we can measure that. But like I said, when you started, when I started delving into the quantum side, and then also in the quantum side, the spirituality shit, you're like, yeah, there is something more to it. Then you watch Interstellar, and then you're like, okay, oh. yeah, it's got a nice mix of that too. Yeah. But like you said, Tay, I've got a family member too who's into that. Who's very spiritual and can see. She can see. And when she gave me a reading one time, uh, my grandmother's 80th birthday, fucking blew my mind. I was like, it just opened me up to something that I was not prepared for. Mm. I was in a low spot. I just um, sort of was having a break from a person who ended up being pretty significant in my life. uh, And I was just a little bit lost. And she started telling me things that I didn't even know about myself. The one thing she did say, said, yeah, you're going to ask her to marry her. That happened. Mm. The other things did happen. It was just kind of like, just these, like when you reflect, like you say, when you reflect on these things, you're like, fuck, you know what? That was something, there is something there. Then I started doing this work and I started doing, I did a visualization too. One of the very first visualizations I did, fucking, I think Jacob's got the recording of it. I was just an inconsolable mess for like 30 minutes as we're doing it. But it was the most brilliant thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. The most brilliant thing. And it really started opening me up. And I'm still learning. Um, what it means to me, what spirituality means to me. And I'm not sure. It's something that's completely new, completely different, and like it is. It's my ego going, mate, you don't know what this is. What's comfortability? Facts, figures. Like, yeah. Facts, figures, what you can measure. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, and I'm like, no, no, you gotta, I've got to fight that. Like you say, swallow your fucking pride, swallow your ego, and just go and follow this. Like, actually explore it. Because, no, it's not fucking gay. It's not... I don't like using that word as a vernacular. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I've got my own little thoughts on that. But, yeah, you know, I don't like... I just... You're right. It's not. It's not something sooky or or weak to mm. go into that realm. Like I'm going away to Allure Hallowell's and Gene Kelly's retreat this weekend. Yep. And it is going to be something completely different to what I'm used to. It's really going to delve. It's going to challenge me to the shit. Like I'm going to be. I reckon I'll be that sopping like 115 kilo mess on the ground. Yeah. In my buddy's made the after an ice bath or whatever. Whatever we do, the fire walk like. I'm probably going to be laying on top of those fucking embers in a mess because I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I'm so open and so ready for it. Mm. You know, it's going to be something so exciting to actually explore, but it's so scary, but I'm ready for it. Like, you know, it's probably where that masculine comes in of going, fucking let's get after it. And there's a feminine of being open to it. But then there's this whole thing coming together, which fun enough, Allura told me to this morning when we were having a chat, she's like, yeah, I'm going to bring all of that, all of this together to become whole. And I'm there going, Phew like what does that mean mm. I don't know what it means but I think it's probably a key part that's missing mm-hmm. you know I can be strong in one way you know soft in another and then but it's like how can I get the two to mix and I feel that probably this is the key mm-hmm. something to explore something different and um, yeah you're right mate trying to understand what spirituality is is probably the first step that's, this is probably where it is for me probably a big hard and fast boom let's go have a look at it and then um, but yeah like yourself Tay saying my physical mental health like meal prep I train I um I plan my week out of when I'm going to eat and 
you know, things like that, especially for shift work. You're like, okay, well, I'm going <laughs> to yeah. wake up this time, eat at this time, and then I'll be filled enough to then train in the morning. Just all these different things that you can put in place. And with, you know, some of the journaling and meditation and stuff like that, that, you know, you don't want to do, but you just end up doing it out of habit. You know, that's probably adds to it. But yeah, that, that one part of spirituality, that one key is going to be a real interesting part. Mm. I'm really excited to kind of delve into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. That'll be exciting. Yeah, man. What else you got on the old list? Well, actually, um, for a bit of fun, a bit of, <laughs> a bit of lightheartedness after that heavy shit, um, <laughs> I thought we could do a little bit of thing. You know, the show Tour Guides, we're going to do a bit of a Polaris Tour Guide thing. So <laughs> for us being, you know, locals and knowing a little bit about the area, uh, we've got some listeners who have moved over here, you know, and, and not really sure where to go. Also got visitors. I think we, you know, people who want to come up and to the beautiful, the beautiful shores of Newcastle with the mm-hmm. coal ships on the horizon and the smell of sulphur in the evening and <laughs> all those beautiful things. Hearing the steel clanking of the mills and all the yep. rest of it. Um, you know, we just want to see what you guys feel some of the best spots you can do in Newcastle. Food and wise, greater, yeah, in the greater surrounding areas. That's all I care about. Good food. So, yeah. listen in, listeners. <laughs> Strap in. So, depending what you want. For burgers, I'm not going to give out my spot, but I'll give out a good oh. spot. Betty's Burgers is pretty good. Betty's yeah. is good. Yeah. Although, I, that's the thing that hit me up at Byron. But anyway, that's up at Byron. That's a Byron. That's a Byron. We're at that's Newcastle. True, 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 Newcastle. true. Yep. Where are we? New Ebra. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> burgers, <laughs> Betty's. Yep. Pizza. Uh, if it's two Nap- Nap- Napoli, is yep. that you say on yep. um, King yeah, no, yeah. Derby Street, Derby King Street, Street. Yep. one of them, one yep. of the streets, yep. on one of them, yep. that or uh, Daroma, yeah, Roma. Yep, I've got another pizza shout as well. Oriental got? Hotel. Yeah. Oh yeah, yep. Yep. fucking yep. banging. Um, <laughs> bakery, cool. Redhead Bakery. Yeah. yeah, Redhead Bakery is a gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then roasted if roasted you want to go there on the weekends, fucking right next to it. Yeah. Great coffee. Girls um, are great there. Yeah, coffee. That's a good shout. Everyone loves a fucking coffee. Shout out Josie's out of Gateshead, just up the road from here. Yeah. I want you to sponsor this podcast. I'm working on it anyway. Um, <laughs> unreal yeah, fucking good. coffee. They have a roastery Love up it. there. <laughs> so good. They have the uh, the purple rain mixed with uh, dark chocolate and yeah, berries. Yeah, I've had that one. Oh, it's so good. Just that one. So good. I've I had, had that one. Yeah, I uh, and they have uh, Papa's bagels up there as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, Papa's, Papa's bagels, bagels are good. with cream cheese. Um, <laughs> dough heads, dough heads. They've got a really good fucking donut at the moment. It's a uh, cream belay. Is it cream belay? Is that yeah, you yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Gang. I've never actually had a mm. one other than this. And th- if this is what it's meant to taste like. Then fucking hell, they are good. They are so good. <laughs> What like else? my mouth is watering right now just talking about it. Yeah, wow. Well. So yeah, dough heads. What about town. um because dough, dough heads isn't just in Newcastle, right? I know that sounds like a stupid nah. question. No, it is. Yeah. Isn't it? Is it? No, I'm I think sure it's, it's a Newcastle it's thing. I thought there was one in Sydney. No, I think there's one in Sydney. Are you I think sure? it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Can you? Can what you about uh, um? What is there? Can Jamie, you? can you pull that up? <laughs> can you pull that up? <laughs> oh, he's got his phone. <laughs> yeah, Hang on, I got it. Um, actually, we'll pull it up after. Um, but I need to know. Um, what's one restaurant? Because I got one in my head. We can all shout one out. What's one restaurant in Newcastle? That's like your absolute go-to. I know we've done cafes, burgers, everything like that. Yeah. But what's your like go-to restaurant? I've got two. Two in my head. Barber Tate. Yep. Yep. What else is there? For restaurants, probably just Barber Tate. Oh, 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 that's me. That's me fucking go-to. All right, I've, I've got two that's going to wrap, go wrap your world in half. All right. First one. Derby Street. I'm talking Autumn Rooms. Okay. So Autumn Rooms is next door to Three Monkeys. Oh, Three Monkeys, And yeah. it's across the road from um, the Delaney, right? Yeah. You go to Autumn Rooms. Here's, here's the game plan. You go to Autumn Rooms. It's an all-day menu. You get the Eggs Benedict, right? But the Eggs Benedict is served on thick brioche bread or brioche buns, whatever you want to call it. But then here's the kicker. They serve the ham that comes with it or the bacon, whatever it is, but it's thick. It's thick cut like this. So yeah, thick yeah. and thick, but the bacon or the ham, I think it's bacon. Um, it is like glazed in like a, a sriracha sort of like blend. Well, you've so, lost me. But it's, this is the thing. It's not like blow your mouth or hot. It's just a little kick. It's a little, yeah. as Lucas says, spice, like a little <laughs> spice, right? And then you have your good eggs over the top and it like the thick sauce, hollandaise sauce. Qu- you, 
Are you a poached egg guy or a scrambled? I'm a massive poached egg guy, but I can't cook poached eggs. They, I, I used to be like that, but then it's, I've learned how easy it is to make fucking poached eggs. Oh, well, hit me up. <laughs> Let me know. Wh- it's just white veneer and salt. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, yeah, anyway, yeah. veneer. Yeah. Vinegar. Vinegar. vinegar yeah. Didn't you say veneer just then? Oh, vinegar. vinegar. What vinegar? Oh, my headphones just cut it. Um, and then the second thing, the second uh, place uh, for like a nighttime dinner, Locks Paddock. Yeah, I heard that's really Locks good. Paddock, right? Is that so the one that it's says on Palmerston? Yeah, so it's on. What's that one that runs along the? What streets that? It's not King Street. No, it's um, where uh, PRDs. What's <laughs> that street? That street. It's not Hunter Street. It's not King. It's Street. come. It's the street off uh, the Newcastle train station. That's right. Uh, anyway. It goes down the hill there. Anyway, yeah. just look it up. Locks Paddock. You oh. get the um the the pasta, and like you said, they have the big bowl um, of like parmesan. fresh cheese of parmesan, and they and they hollow it out and put the pasta in there. And while the pasta is hot, they spin they it spin around it. in the oh. cheese, and they do it in front of you, and then serve it on your plate. Yeah. Unreal, unreal. So Locks Paddock is. I think yeah. we might have to go to a team dinner there. Yeah, okay, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. That sounds anyway, great. Maxie, what do you got? <laughs> Mate, well, not being real local, local. <laughs> oh, we're talking about um, Newcastle, not Singer. Singer, yeah, yeah. Singer doesn't count. You got one pub. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, we don't. We have like, we have 12. <laughs> That's true. 12 pubs. Yeah. That's true. They do. I was about to say, there's definitely not a lot of pubs. Yeah. There, are, there are nine pubs within like, you know, small walking distance of my home. I'm yeah. not an alcoholic. <laughs> anyway, what do you got? What do you got? Uh, well,. <clears throat> Look, I'm going to branch out a little further because, you know, Newcastle slash Hunter Valley. Let's go that far. Okay. Look, best coffee in Singleton I recommend is Kicks Coffee. It's right next to Sports Power on the Main Street and John Street. That's actually pretty good. Um, there's also a little cafe down this little side street I go every morning called Servos. That's good. They know my order off by heart now. <laughs> Not that I don't go there often or anything. Um, they're pretty good. But down here, what have I enjoyed? I've enjoyed Newey Burger Company. That was good. Yep. New Burger, New yeah, New Burger Co. is good. Yeah, they're good. Um, there's a few spots near near Newey Beach. Uh, Estebar, that was a nice place. Estebar, that was banging, a good brekkie spot. Banging. It was right across the road from the, from Newey Beach. Newey Beach, yep. Um, then a little bit further down, there's that park. Like, oh, I can't remember that, that park is right next to Newey Beach. Then there's like a little strip there. There's a um, there's a cafe there. I got it taken to. It was bloody. It was really nice as well. Um, that's just like kind of next to Hunter Street. Yep. On Hunter Street itself, one penny black. That was good. I did a fair bit of. Uh, I had a few brekkies and did some OCE study there a few mornings. Gotcha. While I was waiting for um my previous partner to finish work, and we meet up there for a bit and chill out. That was actually pretty fun. Um, what else have I done? Oh, the one bad inn was nice for a good bloody few beers. Yeah, I didn't even really like them there. Right? Didn't? Okay, yeah. I thought it was. Where's that? Is that along it's where on, um, Newey Burger Co is as well? On that yeah, street? yeah, yeah. It's on yeah. that street. It wasn't too bad. Oh, look, it was good for it's good for like a bit of a lunch and um, yep. a few beers. I, I enjoyed that. I guess. Oh, so you go. Anyway, well, well you, you were talking about donuts and stuff with Doughboys. Now I'm going to give you a shameless plug, Marshall and Daughters. Now they are phenomenal. Who's okay. Daughters? Marshall and Daughters. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. He's, he's, he's a, he's a <laughs> one bloke. He actually. That's a bloke. <laughs> so there's no fucking daughters. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, he's right here, right here. Yeah, but, um, the up. cookies themselves are like I'm talking like that, listeners. Massive. And they got like all these different ones. He uh was there at the comp and he was, you know, he's gonna come out with uh like a hunter strength and performance like our gym, like a line, like for our coach. Like mm. he and him and our coach are they gonna like, they're, they're decent mates and they're gonna come out with a line, but it's all gonna be like very like sort of protein based sort of things, like protein cookies, like high protein, high calorie sort of ones for sounds you know, like for, a Disaster for a shit. Oh, it's, mm. it, it is. Per, it's gonna be perfect. We're gonna call it like you know, after he's gonna name it after after him. It's, so it's pretty good. But those cookies, holy shit, mate! And his packaging is like in this. I'm hungry. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> hungry, man. Yes. Those enchiladas the, are gonna get pumped. There's um actually another spot, Il Volcano. Oh, big snitties. Big snitties. Mm. Big kilo snitties, and Ooh. you put a pasta on top of it. Yeah. I don't. I, honestly, I'm not too sure if it's still there. Yeah, I think it might be shut down. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But yeah. it is fucking amazing, eh? Things shut, yeah, things shut down. Do you boys have a? Uh, I know that we don't delve into the alcohol that much, but do we have a little plug for like barber tea? Barber tea. Yeah. Because they do. They do food. And they it's do cocktails. A, they do cocktails. They do mad wine, and yeah. it's dark. Yeah. So you can yeah. go in there and sit down and eat. Like the chairs are like couches. Yep. You go in there, it's dark. You get drunk as hell. Eat yep. as much food as you can, and then you're out of there. You're mm, going home. Nice. What That's about you, Maxie? What like a bar? Yeah, just like uh, do you have a go to? Oh, no, I don't have a go to. Not here. Um, I don't really have a go to much anywhere. Or I'll what about like a? Anywhere. What about like a? You know, nice little. 
I don't know, cocktail bar, whiskey bar, or because I've got one in mind. If you're still thinking, no. Well, look, the one I found accidentally on the weekend was um, well, on Sunday night was Big Kahuna's. Blue like, Kahuna's. Blue Kahuna's. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was Blue just Kahuna's. no. Seriously, it was yeah. the only place that was kind of open uh, on Sunday night around eleven thirty at night. Yeah, you know, we finished a presentation dinner and went for a bit of a walk, and I was like, "Fuck!" I'm like, "Where's this music pumping from?" And yeah, found this little Blue spot. Yeah, yeah. Had yeah I'm pretty yummy cocktails, and I'm, then started talking. Now they still got that fish bowl there. Yeah, they surely they would probably. That I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Uh, thinking back to my hospitality days, I'd, I'm pretty sure it's very hard to find a license, like a, a um, RSA, like a hospitality license for a pub that goes past 12 a.m. on a Sunday, yeah, except right. for the Kent. I think the Kent yeah, has one. Open, yeah. Yeah, anyway, um, my uh, my one would be, uh, it's called Humbug. Oh, Humbug. I think I've been there. Humbug, it's within uh, the uh, the mall. It's like in the, in, in the mall. Uh, really, really nice food, just prepare to pay, but it's really good. Um, and they have a really good range of uh, alcoholic beverages. Beautiful. It's really nice. Uh, I'm just Actually, trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's you know what? I think the gangster ones, yeah. If people are willing to go for a weekend drive, if you guys are, you know enjoy a little bit of adventure, I highly recommend you guys take your partners or you know, love interests. It'll be a very cool date. Do you want to go on a date? To Ralston. I mean, <laughs> go out to Ralston. <clears throat> Anyone know where that is? Ralston. So it's like, uh, how close. do you spell that? I know it's not in Newcastle. No, it's not. <laughs> it's uh, not in Redhead. Uh, it's only uh, fucking Redhead. Yeah, well, fucking mate, branch out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, Redhead's sick. Nah. So, so good. 229, baby. What's up? <laughs> Let's go, baby. Uh, so it's um, it's sort of like near Sandy Hollow. Well, on your way out, Devon, Sandy Hollow way. But instead of going to Sandy Hollow, you go a little bit further. Is it Sandy, isn't Sandy Hollow in cars? I thought Sandy Hollow was <laughs> the squirrel out of SpongeBob. <laughs> uh, Sandy, Isn't that her name? Uh, Sandy Cheeks. Oh, Sandy Cheeks. <laughs> yeah, Sandy Cheeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's um. It's it's Ralston. It's like a little. It's a town probably in between. Uh, in between Denman and Mudgee, so to speak. It's about a couple of hours away. Okay. But there's a Japanese. Well, there's a dumpling and tea house there. Okay. I mean. And I'm telling you, it is the fucking best little spot, mate. Like it's, it's authentic. It's top notch authentic. So, not only is the drive quite beautiful along the Bylong Valley Way, please take it easy, you listeners and you guys. It is quite windy and narrow in places, um, but beautiful drive. If you ride motorbikes, ideal for that. Um, otherwise, yeah, you know, you go out there. It's a nice little old country town, Ralston, mm. and you know you want you'll find the tea house. It's pretty pretty obvious there. Uh, and it is just scrumptious. It's beautiful. It's scrumptious. awesome. This is this is the question I have for yeah. you, Max. Are the dumplings better than, dumpling than the story. ones? No, dumpling stories overrated. Right, man. Or eight, all eight buns. Or eight buns is overrated too. I've got Back one off. for you. Um, you tell me that one. Are they better than the dumplings that you get at the Sunday markets? You know what? I haven't been to the Sunday markets, man. I can't make a comparison. But I'm telling you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something a, a bit few. controversial. Go controversial? Ahead. Controversial. Yeah, that one. That, yeah, that one. The dumplings are only that good because you can't get them anywhere else on a Sunday. Uh, turn this podcast off. Because <laughs> fade to black. I can tell you right now. Bro, I swear to God, I can, no, 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 shut your mouth. Eight this buns is, is, is so much no, better. Listen, okay, hang on. All right, hang on. I agree. Eight buns is good, but better than Sundays. I, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm going to say this: dumpling story is overrated as AF. It might be now, but back in the day, it was really good. Uh, okay. Back in the day, but there is so much dough compared to what you get in the inside. Have you wrapped your lips around a uh, oh. fried pork bun? Oh, hey, oh, mate. <laughs> what type of pork bun are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. uh, say ones. again, which one? A pan fried pork bun. Pan fried pork bun. So they're like the little bread thing and it's got the meat in the middle. Oh. Okay. Oh. But see, that's not a dumpling. It's to a, me, anyway. That is to me. Yeah. Because yeah. you go to dumpling, it's a dumpling. It, don't it's a pan, it says pan me. fried pork. It's a, it's a dumpling. What's that, Justin Bieber song? It don't matter to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's a king with and that a queen? Anyway. Well, for a guy who doesn't really branch out much culinary style, yep. um, I have been getting better at it. But I'm just saying, you know, this one time I went there, I got told about it just randomly by somebody, and I was like, oh, I'll give it a crack. And on my way out to see my best mate in Orange, shout out Tyler, um, he, yeah, well, I stopped by. We stopped by and I went home, and holy shit, it was awesome. It was nice. I had a green tea as well, green Japanese tea, and I had mm. some dumplings. I don't eat them often. Well, but let's just say the uh, three or four dumpling places I went to at uni because they were very cheap. They were like, you know, a few cents a bloody. Back then, when I mean, you can't afford much to eat. Copy. You know, yeah, you just go for it, hook in. They were better than them in Sydney. 
I'm talking Sydney, you know. Mm. You always find the best foods in Sydney, but you also find a lot of shit well, foods. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that being said, ever go down to Sydney, if you guys are in the vicinity of Maroubra, go to Il Chuko. Il Chuko is, is the really best chicken out. shop. Oh, I am, mate. Il Chuko. Hey, look, I'm a guy who travels a lot. You know, a, uh, another good place yeah. for meat is uh, Smoking Hot and Saucy, I think yes. it's called. Yes. Do you know my old coach owns it? Mayfield. Is right, it? My or old Islington. Coach, Rob Thraves. He is his wife. His fucking wife's fucking mate, yeah, bro. Yeah. Smoking what? Smoking, smoking hot, hot and saucy. And saucy. <laughs> what is it? It's a meat, like, Texas smoked meat. meat and shit. It's fucking hectic, yeah, bro. It's True. fucking hectic. So, Rob coached me when I was 10 years old playing rugby. Some 8 to 10 playing rugby. Yep. Then he went to Canada to uh, go play some rugby himself. And then he kind of ventured down to America a little bit, went to Texas and met his now wife. Yep. I probably fucked up your story here, Rob, but you know that. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's just let's skip and fuel a little bit. That's where he went, and you know, married this beautiful woman, Randy, and they. Randy fucked Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and he, um, I think he got a bit of the. He got really into his into his uh, smoking meat in Texas, and I think he might have used their family recipe, um, and then made his own little additions to it. Now. He's like one of the best meat smokers in Australia. He won multiple awards, and now he's got these restaurants here. So every time I see him, I'm like, ah, I know this bike. Yeah, they're fucking there you go. Person, mate. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely. So like I'm, I'm fucking starving. Man. I can't I'm wait to go to Hayda. Hayda's got a mad steak. I'm actually, me. I'm gonna go to Betty's Burger here. Yeah, I I'm can. Gonna, I'm just gonna have enchiladas. Actually, I might go home and have dinner. I'll go home and have dinner. Get out of the office for a bit and come back. Yeah, nice. yeah. All right. All right. Well, mm. yeah. Thank you for listening. We're That's another episode. Yeah, we're back. Um, also, we've got episode 50 coming up soon. Ooh. So, uh, everyone at home, let us know what you want us to dress up as. I, I did we say that in a couple other podcasts. But he was going to be Fat Thor, I was going to be Normal Thor, and you are going to be Black Thor. <laughs> there is no Black Thor. We'll do, I just, do I have the day off then? We'll make one. <laughs> we'll make one. Oh, well, unless you want to be the director. I'm coming as Black Panther. <laughs> <Okay>. All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening. See you on the next one. Peace. Fade to black. Mm.